Hello everyone and welcome to Gitspalooza. I'm going to have our next micro myco tutorial and I'm going to try to keep this one short, which is how I intended them. I thought we would continue the process. Um, if you remember, I only finished two of the three mushrooms I made in the original video. So I picked out a different species for this one. And uh, one of the kind of neat things you'll see with fungi is they will expand they, they'll often come up in groups, um, sometimes huge groups, but you'll often see them in groups of two, three, four, um, coming out of roughly the same area. So I thought I would do something similar. So what I've done is I've made a little ball, and that is going to be our mushroom cap, and we're going to do this one as a mushroom cap that hasn't quite expanded as far as some of the other ones. So my intention is to push this in and have the mushroom deform a little bit, but not much, not a huge flat cap. I want to keep it small. Uh, over one of the things I want to do is make it a little easier for this, this peg to get in. So I'm just going to take some sandpaper and round it off. You could make it a point if you wanted to. Um, I don't want to use this point because I don't think it's, it'll deform the cap enough. I actually want a little bit of deformation in this. So now that I have my ball, I'm going to put it in my palm of my hand primarily because my palm will squish when I put this in, which will give a more natural look. There we go. And then, ah, I had it. There we go. All right, so we have a little mushroom cap just forming. So I'm going to round it a little bit just using my fingers. I give it a little bit more of an angle than it's got now. This is, there we go. All right, not bad. So we have basically a, 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 a button that's expanded, started to expand. It is now starting to look a little bit more like a mushroom. You could certainly make this a, just a small mushroom if you wanted, you know, the ones I make are not to scale, they're pretty big, but otherwise you wouldn't see them. There we go. So, I, I mean, simple as that. Take some green stuff, put a blob, put it on a toothpick, and then I'm going to put, let's see, that's on camera. So I'm going to put that there. There's an original one. And I'll, I'll make these different heights. So as you can see, this we have this one that looks like it's just starting. We have this other one that's that's halfway expanded. Um, I'd like to make yet another one that is just the ball that we had talked about as uh, at the beginning we talked about these fungi forming from balls so I'm going to take a little one and all I'm going to do is and this this time I am going to put the sharp end in because I don't want to deform this ball too much I want it to look more or less like an egg coming out of the ground. There we go. And it's got a smaller stem. And that looks pretty darn good. Now, so we've got one just barely coming out and I'll have this one really low to the ground. I'll have this one up a little higher so you'll be able to see the stem a little bit. This one will be a little higher. And then the fourth one in the group I will make like I made the others. All right, I'm gonna to try to make a larger, flatter fungal cap to go along with these. So we have a baby, a medium, uh, almost mature, and then this one will be the mature. So I roll up the ball, I added some water, smash it down flat, and use my finger to roll it around in my palm, spread it out, try to get a broader, flatter edged fungi. There we go. Now. It does really help if you put a little water on these. If you try to do them dry, they will stick to the wax paper. 
So I'll push that in and then I'll very gently tease it off. There's a mushroom cap. It's nicely situated. One side's a little droopy, I can lift it up, but as you can see, looks pretty good. It's got some cracks in it, which is perfectly acceptable. You can even roll the ridges up on some of these older ones. That is also, you see in nature quite a bit. So I'm gonna tuck this one in here. There we go. So we've got our four, four varieties of fungi here. Oops, sorry, those are way out of the way. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a button, so just barely coming out of the ground. This is coming up out of the ground a little bit, this a little bit more, and this will be the mature one out of the group. And I will model them and place them as a group. So we'll see you back uh, in a bit once these are all dry and we'll get the painting done. Well, I'm trying to get a little smarter about doing these videos. So uh, rather than watching you, uh, making you watch me struggle through everything I'm doing, I thought I would simply do the painting on the group and then do one live so you can see how I'm doing the painting since um, that's kind of the, the minor part. So this is the uh, Rugosomyces carneus, and then uh, it's also known as a pink dome, dome cap. Uh, these look a little more orange than they are pink, um, and they are more orange than they are pink. Uh, the one that, the picture that I was looking at, looked at a number of them on the internet, some were pink, some were very orange, some were salmon colored, which actually, if you've eaten salmon, you know what that kind of orangey pink is. So um, mine are a little orange, more orange probably than they should be. But I, I don't know, the younger ones were really orange with little hints of red. And then as they get older, they get a little more pink and they get uh, white. It's funny, I, uh, some of the photographs have them going white on the top of the mushroom and retaining their color out towards the edges like this guy here. I, others are just the opposite where they retain the pinkish color on the top of the cap and it bleaches as it goes to the edge. I opted to paint it this way um, just for, for giggles. So you can, you can see the whole, in essence, the, the growth um, from, from the uh, smallest button slowly moving up. So I'm gonna have all these as a bunch uh, which I'll cover in a little bit, but I don't want to spend too much time talking. Let's just get right to painting. So what I've done on these, and this is going to be a little tricky. Let me get myself centered. Okay, so I'm going to start. Now, since this is almost mature, it's not going to be as bright. It's going to be a little more pink than it is orange. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a, a little bit darker orange and I've got this, um, this uh, what's it called? Pink horror color, um, which is very nice, kind of a, there's another one called Dusty Rose, um, but I think for this application, I like the pink horror better. I'm not sure what happened to my Dusty Rose, anyway. Um, or you could use Bugman's Glow, that's another one that'd be a little, that would be pink, but is a little more to the brown. But anyway, I'm uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my own base color. So I'm just gonna take some of the pink, some of the orange, and I wanna keep this thin. So I'm gonna add, a, I just dipped a little bit of water. So there's my base coat. Now I'm gonna quickly paint this. That's actually a pretty good salmon color. That's better than the uh, the versions I did earlier. So I'm just putting paint on here as quickly as I can in order to not have the video go on forever. And then, then I'm going to rinse off the brush, tap it a few times. So it's got water on it, but not a lot. And then I'm just going to go on the top. And that is going to pull a little of the paint off the top. There we go. This makes it look kind of white. So not as white as the other one by a long shot. But whiter than 
the other two. So this is a this is one of my cheats for dealing with this. The problem is you got to be careful because you get too much water on there, and then all of a sudden you lose your color because then all you have is white. So I'm going to dab a little bit of color back onto this. Because I, I want the white up near the top. I don't want it to bleed down. There we go. Okay, so that's a good amount of white. I'm going to close those. I'm going to take the air dryer out. Um, I will, uh, I'll restart the video. Here we are. The main paint is dry. I'm going to come in now with an orange wash. Now the orange wash is actually fairly dark, which is what I want. I want it, I want this to get darker as the cap goes out. You can see I'm, I'm pulling, I'm always pulling down on these mushrooms. Um, I don't want to do a discrete line because I, I don't like what that does. And then I'm also going to put just a little bit on the stem. There we go, tuck some under there. And then rinse my brush off. This time I may, I'm actually gonna wipe it on just on the back of my hand just to, because I want most of the water off. And then I'm gonna actually pull up from where I have the wash. I, I just wanna move some of the color up the cap, but not very much. So there we go. I'm trying to avoid really clear lines uh, about where the blending is. It's actually pretty good. Um, and we'll take a little more. And this time I'm going to stick to the very outside edge. Am I still on camera? I think I am. Here we are. Here we are. So I'm going to let that dry. I'll be back in a second. And then we'll move on to the next stage. Now to give this a bit more salmon-y color, I want it a little yellow in it. Um, the um, younger versions of this got pretty heavy yellow washes at the end to give them a little yellow glow. I don't want a heavy yellow wash. All I want is a little bit of yellow. Okay, that's too big a brush. Oh, here it is. I just want a little bit of yellow around the edges just to give it a little bit of color and then I'll put a little bit of yellow on the stem and again this isn't this is just to give it a little bit of a tint so even though I'm using washes I'm not using them as washes I'm using them just to give a little bit of tint to the the, the fungus and then while I've got you here, the other thing I want to do is get a shadow under the cap like I did before. So I'm going to use some Seraphim Sepia. Um, you know, the exact colors for this don't matter at all. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. So I'm going to lay this in here. And I'll probably do that in a couple of rounds so I can build up the shadow. I'm going to let this dry and I'll be right back. Lastly, I'm going to use a little bit of Reichland Fresh Flesh Shade. Again, uh, because it has a, a generally red tone. Um, and I'm going to put some under the cap. And again, I'm going to put some around the very outside. And we're just building up layers of translucent shade until we get the effect we want. And uh, again, you'll notice I'm using the shape of the brush in essence to do the blending so I don't get a I don't get a solid line around the outside of the fungus I get these little stripes that will blend then into the layer up above them and um, so that'll be it so uh, what I'll do is I'll put on one more I'll dry it I'll put on one more step down here just to make it a little darker and then we'll go on to the uh, to the next stage the gills of these fungi are actually white or white-ish. So I just took some, and now I'm having to cover up all of this stuff. 
So I left the paint fairly thick. And again, this is hardly going to be visible, maybe just from certain angles. So I'm not gonna kill myself trying to be perfect. So there we are, white gills on that one. Um, not totally perfect, but perfect enough. You could probably edge highlight it in essence to get a nice smooth, let's see. Can you, I gotta be, you guys looking at the back of my hand. Sorry, there we go. So you can just roll it and have your brush touch the edge like this. This is how you do edge highlighting. And that works just fine for that fungus right there. You gotta make sure it's in focus. There. All right, so I'm gonna leave that to dry. Then I'll grab the other big one. So there it is. What, let me. Sorry, I have to touch the screen of my phone to get it to focus right. There we go. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. All right. Try this again using the, see if there's any areas that need to be edge, edged. Oh, shoot. Ah, look at that. I'm fast enough. I fixed it. Yeah, I don't want to have to try to blend over being messy, so I'd rather not be messy. All right, so there we go. White gills, pizza cake. I decided after all this work, rather than doing one big batch of five, I would do a batch of three and a batch of two. So I've taken a couple of small pieces of cork that I think will be big enough to support these. And if I want at some point to glue them down to something, I certainly can. I'll put flock on the cork afterwards, but uh, I think this will work. Um, so I'm gonna, I just broke the cork up with my fingers and um, so it's a decent shape. So yeah, I'll be back in a minute after I get the mushrooms placed and we can talk about it and see how we like it. There we are. Mushrooms are placed. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. There. Uh, I think those turned out really well. I like them on their little, little stands. Now there's one more step. I'll put some uh, flocking on them. Uh, I'm not going to get fancy with the flocking. I just want some green because I think it'll make the salmon color stand out really well. I think I'm going to use blended turf, Woodland Scenics blended turf instead of static grass because it the, the blended turf just gives a more uniform uh, coloring to the ground. The, blend, the static grass would be cool because it would stick up, but I, I just don't like the way it looks in uh, in mass like I do the blended turf. So we will um, be back in a minute and see how it turns out. And here we are after all the fiddling is done. So uh, what I did was I added green, um, that blended turf, because it covers the ground well. And then I added some tufts of uh, static grass to, to give it a little bit of a grassy feel. So here are the mushrooms in context. Uh, with a, a log that is similarly treated and some bamboo behind it. Uh, as you can see, these are still way out of proportion, but if I actually did them the size they were, they would be these teeny tiny little things that, that might look more realistic but wouldn't really add to the table at all and wouldn't be worth doing. However, the end result here is pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm going to pan back a little bit so you can see what they look like from the top. Pretty nice. Here we go. I just got them tucked along a log. However, I put them on one of my tables out in the middle of a grassy area and they looked really good. So I am very pleased with how these turned out. Um, they were fun to do. And these little nubbins here, they're just little cork, bits of cork with the mushroom on them. You can pick them up and put them wherever you want. And that is really handy. Um, you can just 
take a handful of these things. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to keep making them, whether you guys get sick of them or not. I, mean, I probably won't. At some point, I'll stop posting, but um, I really like them. So I'm just going to kind of work my way through the fungus world and uh, make a bunch of these so I can lay them out because I think they're really cool. You know, the other thing I don't think I mentioned earlier, you see how shiny the caps are? That's because usually when the caps are expanding and the mushrooms are growing, it's because it's been wet and moist because the fungus needs that moisture in order to make the mushroom happen. And so I just put some gloss coat, uh, either spray gloss or in this case, because I'd forgotten about it until I already had the mountain that mounted, I just put some of GW's uh, brush gloss on and uh, I think it worked fine, it looks good. So uh, I may do that from now on because it's, it's one less thing to spray. I've got a really neat project up next, it's the boletes, and I had an idea um, for making the stems of the boletes to be able to show you a really cool trick that I learned back when I was a semi-professional jeweler. Um, I, you know, just doing side projects, I was never formally trained, but I, I had a friend who was a professional jeweler and uh, who, who trained me while I was unemployed and looking for a reason for, for living. That's a little extreme. <laughs> but, uh, but my wife was kind enough to, to who was employed, uh, to pay a bill and, and he kind of walked me through some of the basics. And one of the things he showed me is a really cool little trick. And it works perfectly well with mushroom, little wooden mushrooms as it does with metal jewelry. So that'll be uh, the next tutorial. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Gitsapalooza.